Hi, today I'm going to do an Elizabeth Taylor inspired makeup look. I'm very excited about this because I've always loved and admired Elizabeth Taylor. She's one of the makeup muses in my book and I just feel like she's a true beauty icon. I was once booked to do her makeup, believe it or not. When I joined my um, the first agency that I was with in the sort of mid 90s, the agent also repped a male makeup artist that used to do her makeup every time she came to England. And he was ill and couldn't make it, so they suggested me and I was booked. I think they sent my portfolio and I was booked. So I was quite young and starting out and I was so excited. Can you imagine if you've got a booking to do Elizabeth Taylor's makeup, how you feel? Um, Anyway, she was coming over to London for one of her charity galas. And then I think about three days before this event was supposed to be happening, I got the message that she was actually too sick to travel. She'd come down with something and she got she was unwell. So I was so disappointed. I can't tell you how disappointed I was. I feel like I came this close to doing Elizabeth Taylor's makeup. Anyway, drawing a veil over that. Um, I just love her because I feel like she is a true Hollywood movie star, you know, in the, in the true sense of the word. You never saw Liz Taylor shuffling around on a day off with no makeup and, you know, wearing the 1950s equivalent of Ugg boots and tracksuit bottoms. She was always bejeweled, decked out in her diamonds, emeralds, makeup, hair, glamorous and fabulous at all times. Her look changed a lot from the 50s, the 60s, 70s, the 80s, every decade really, like like everyone's. But I'm going to concentrate today on really more of the mid-50s look, so kind of a classic, iconic um, Liz Taylor look. I have a lovely model today, her name's Laura and she's an actress. And when we've spoken, she said that she loves vintage inspired makeup looks, so I think she's going to love this one. So I'm going to start by using the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation. This is a good colour for Laura and it's a good sort of long lasting foundation. So I'm just going to spread a thin layer all over to start. Now I'm just applying some concealer. I'm using Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage but I'm blending it with a little bit of the foundation just so it goes on really smoothly. So I'm just going to set everything with a very light dusting of powder just for now and then we can go on to eyes. So the first thing I'm doing is just applying a light wash of a skin toned eyeshadow so whatever matches up, colour matches up to your skin tone or something close just to get a base on there. So onto the liner and this is obviously hugely important. Just close your eyes for me. Now Liz did wear some eyeshadow but not so much. I mean it wasn't hugely popular to wear lots and lots of eyeshadow. Eyeliner was definitely more the thing in the 50s. There were kind of greens and blues and but there just weren't the wasn't a huge selection of eye palettes that we have nowadays. Really they didn't come in till about the 1970s and I know that during the 1970s and 80s Liz definitely wore a lot more eyeshadow, particularly violets and purples. I'm just working right into the roots of the lashes. Just look this way towards me and down slightly. I'm going to go really thin into the inner corner here. You can look down even further if that helps. So much thinner and close. So I'm just sort of mapping out a good shape. And then I'm going to just map out the side here as well. It's not a huge cat flick, it's just a little kitten flick I'd say for Liz in the 50s. And then just smoothing that in. I'm actually going to go over this with liquid liner in a second, but I find gels quite good for sort of getting your shape. And then look ahead again, and then we can just sort of come slightly underneath. You can look up if you like about halfway along and I'll buff this in a second and then using this underneath line as a guideline I'm going to sort of join that up at the outer edge there and then close and that's a good sort of 
just a good mapped out shape. I'm just going to buff that in before I start to put some liquid liner on. So now I'm just going to go over the top of this with liquid liner just because it's a more authentic finish for this era. A little bit shinier. But now that we've got the shape roughly mapped out, we can kind of work with it. It's much easier. So continue with eyes, I'm going to use this dark grey just to blend in the liner and a lighter grey to go over the lids. So if you just look up for me, Laura. Just using the darker grey shade to start. Still keeping the focus of the dark line at the outer half. And then just using the lighter grey shade just to blend gently over the lid. And open to look straight ahead. And a little bit at the outer edge there. Just quite subtle. So I've just curled eyelashes and now lots and lots of black mascara. I'm going to use some individual fake eyelashes. Elizabeth Taylor didn't need to wear false eyelashes because she had this weird thing where she was born with a double set of eyelashes. I know it sounds incredible. And actually when she was on the set of one of her early films when she was very young, the director asked her to leave set and to remove all the makeup so she had too much eye makeup on. And when they started sort of scrubbing away, they realized she didn't have any on at all. She didn't have any mascara. She just had these incredibly thick lashes. And the director is rumored as saying, any girl born with a double set of eyelashes is born to be a star. So just to start mapping out the eyebrow with a pencil just to get my rough shape that I'm going to be going for. I'm going to be using two pencils actually in powder because obviously the brows are quite a big deal here. So just getting the rough shape. So we need a really high arch point there and then quite a dramatic plunge down from there. Really quite a strong angle. And then we need to fill this in here as well. It's going to look quite unnatural, particularly compared to what is kind of fashionable now, although I guess it's not a million miles away from some of the, the stronger brows that you see. And I'm going to use a darker pencil just to start creating some hair shapes and a bit more depth. And just build up slowly, I think that's the best way to do this. You don't have to worry about it looking really natural, so that helps. So I'm just filling in now with powder. So I'm just rounding these edges now at the inner corner. Then I'm just using a damp Q-tip with a little bit of remover on, just to clean up underneath to get that round shape going there. Now I'm using a dampened brush, and this is with the powder again. This is to get the depth. So going over with a wet dampened brush, and this should just bring it all together now, give them that real solid look that they had. And then just keep building up, making adjustments to the shape. So this front section needs to be quite bulbous in a way. You almost need to think from about the middle there that you're doing a big kind of um, almost oh, it's teardrop shape really. Now I'm going to use some contour. This is a matte bronzer. Sort of warm up Laura's cheeks and also sculpt a little bit as well. Before I do blush, I'm just starting the lip line. And you've got a really straight angle from the inner corner up to the cupid's bow and then quite a wide space here and then straight down and I'm just going to shade in at the inner corner Next I'm going to use a slightly more orange pencil, just to use in the centre of the shape before lipstick. 
And then I'm going to go over the top with lipstick. And this is quite true red with a bit of shine in. And then finish off with the colour straight from the bullet, just in the centre there for a bit of shine. And finish off with some blush. Actually, I'm going to put some highlighter on as well after that, but blush is important. And then a final touch of highlighter just at the high points of the face. So wigs on, you're looking incredibly transformed. I'm just pumping up the contouring a little bit now, obviously with the darker hair, everything's looking totally different. And also blush, I've intensified blush a little bit as well. It's amazing how different makeup looks from on blondes from brunettes. I think also for your lips, I'm just going to use a dark, darker lip pencil around the edge here just to give a bit more shape and then blend everything in with the lipstick again. So I'm just adding a little bit of gel liner there in black for the mole a la Liz and then some brown eyebrow powder just to blend that in. So you're ready, you're finished. You look incredible. I feel amazing. It's such a transformation. I know you said that you love Sherilyn Cheryl Fenn and all those kind of in Hollywood vintage inspired yeah. sort of actresses. And I just think you are the perfect Liz. I know, I feel like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't be Liz without emeralds and diamonds. And these, oh, these earrings are insane. Do you know, I borrowed these Jessie McCormack earrings a while ago to go to a party and I felt a million dollars. I mean, I just, every time I caught sight of myself, I was just blown away. So, I mean, you really can't play Liz without, without them. Absolutely. So you they really, feel amazing. You really have carried it off. And thank you so much for being my Liz. Thank you.